بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والآكبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا تعويل وجعلنا من خيرة أمة سيدنا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة وتم تسليم اللهم لا إلم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم We seek Allah's protection from knowledge that does not benefit from a heart that has no khushu, from a nafs that's never had enough, from an eye that does not tear, from a dua that's not heard. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome to Ramadan Radio Wolves, 87.9 FM. Not only 87.9 FM, we're also live if you go through the website, if you go through the app, um, Facebook as well. They've got, they've got all bases covered on this. I just want to make sure this is working since my first day. It is, it is, um, it, I, I'm just going to have a look at this just one sec. Okay, just going to translate across because the other one seems to have frozen. So hopefully people can see me f uh, from there uh, online as well. So uh, welcome and um uh, I've been kind of dragged in to do this show. It's going to be going live once a week, every Monday from 3 to 4, inshallah. And the topic I've picked is Seerah. But uh, it's not going to be possible to cover the Seerah in four, five lessons. I'm lucky I get an extra one, uh, an extra an extra show. Um, I'm currently covering actually the Seerah. We started about six months ago. It's uh, live streamed on YouTube. Um, six months. Um, it took us about 20 lessons, which is 20 hours to get to Revelation. So you can imagine that it's not going to be possible to cover all of that in in five shows. So what I've decided to do was to pick a kind of aspect or a topic uh, for each show uh, about the, the Prophet Sallallahu give some descriptions on that and then see how we can apply that to our lives also. Okay, so... Um, because, like I said, I've got an extra show this today. Um, we, we, Ramadan, inshallah, will be starting like tomorrow or Wednesday, um, based on based on your locality. Uh, just check with your uh, uh, mosques. Um, today, I'm going to co start off by covering um, the Prophet's Ramadan, and I thought that was a good point because Ramadan for some will just start in a few hours, for some the following um, the following day in the evening. So I think it's be a good preparation for everyone. About myself briefly, um, most of you won't know, obviously. I'm, I'm from Wolverhampton, born and bred, Penfields, and I'm associated, linked with the Yubam Ashtud, um, Penfields, Humber Road. Um, in terms of my studies, I've been studying, uh, my main teacher is uh, Sheikh Dr. Asim, who was presenting the uh, breakfast show last year, Um He's, he's my main teacher who I've kind of studied over 10 years with, uh, amongst other teachers, and my shuk, etc. Um, so uh, anything anything good that comes about, uh, the reward kind of goes to my teachers. Anything anything bad that comes about, it was obviously that, that period of the lesson where I wasn't paying attention. Okay, so forgive me for that. But let's move on uh, um, to the, the, the Prophet's lessons Ramadan. So first and foremost, we talk about intentions and what should our intention be when it comes to um, entering Ramadan okay so we should intend to be in a state that Allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam love for us to be in okay we should seek to attain Allah's pleasure and to to perfect our following of the messenger Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that we we attain his companionship okay um, we should intend that a, a new door is open to us in understanding the Qur'an and acting according to it. And that's very important, actually. The link between Ramadan and the Qur'an is, is very, very important. And we should maintain that relationship. Okay? And I'll, I'll, I'll speak briefly about it later on, inshallah. We should also um, look to avoid... Uh, well, we should intend, obviously, to, to avoid the inward things that nullify the fast. And then that's probably something new for some people. Um, 
outwardly we we kind of you got you got the aspect of drink um food marital relation etc that break the fast but imam ghazali speaks about the inward fast as well. imam ghazali speaks about three levels of the fast and the outward like i just mentioned there the, that's the ordinary people that's it then you got the next level which is the fast of the pious um who guard their ears their eyes their tongues hands feet uh, and all organs for from disobedience then you have the the kind of next level which is the fast of the elite it's for it's for the heart to be focused on nothing but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay like i said we we're, we're on level 1 we should be working our way towards the the highest highest level but uh, inshallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the tawfiq to get there okay generally speaking when it comes to ramadan we talk about four qualities that one should be working on during ramadan you have the guidance aspect and you get this guidance aspect through the recitation of uh, the the holy quran okay you got the piety which you achieve through the fast itself you got the integrity and uh, which you know you you retain uh, one retains one dignity by keeping free from that which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes and 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 find it shameful okay and then you got the independence of freedom from the desire of the self and from the from the people okay so how was the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ramadan okay, first of all ramadan was um the, the actual month of ramadan was there obviously before fasting and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had a relationship with this month of ramadan before fasting came about okay um so fasting became obligatory in the, about the second year of hijra okay but the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, as we know he would go into seclusion he could go into seclusion and we know this through that the first revelation came about in the cave of cave of hira okay the first revelation in surah alaq uh, read in the name of the lord who created okay and um, in describing this in throughout the quran uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes and confirms in various places that revelation or quran was revealed in the month of ramadan in surah baqarah the month of ramadan in which the quran was revealed also in surah qadr verily we revealed it in the night of qadr so this relationship with the month of ramadan was there before although we kind of see it as just linked to fasting um so having that love for the blessed month is important the month itself the blessed month of ramadan so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, initial initial act was to to love ramadan and make dua for its attainment and we got quite famously when the month of rajab would arrive the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would make the dua oh allah uh, make my rajab and shaban blessed uh, make my rabi and shaban blessed and 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 grant us ramadan you know give us the tawfiq to get to ramadan itself okay the goal was there to get to ramadan okay this and there's various narration of this dua in different formations i'm not going to be trying out different different narrations because it'll get a bit repetitive and um, and i don't i want to kind of keep your attention so i'm going to be just brushing upon all of this Uh, I've got limited time as well, inshallah. Um, so preparing for Ramadan and the, Pro- the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's preparation for Ramadan started in advance in Shaban. It's probably a bit late for us now because um, we've got, but like Shaban is over. But still, you bear this in mind: the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was prepared in the month of, uh, um, from from for Ramadan in the month of Shaban, and and our mother, uh, saying that Aisha radhiyallahu taala anha, uh, mentioned that. Uh, apart from ramadan the month that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fasted the most was the month of shaban okay and one of the wisdoms in this practice uh, is that shaban is the month when deeds are presented deeds are presented uh, in our court of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted his wanted his deeds to be presented in in the court of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while he is in a state of fasting now when it comes to the presentation of deeds there are three um, three periods you have firstly you have the daily period and these are presented daily uh, on uh, on the time of fajr and on the time of asr okay um on a weekly basis these are presented on a monday and a thursday one of the reasons why is sunnah days for fasting is monday and thursday okay and then you have the annual aspect so these are presented annually and that's during the month of uh, shaban okay however another wisdom is it's it's almost you're using shaban as a pre- preparation for ramadan it's similar to when when you pray the sunnah 
the sunnah prayers before you pray the fard. Okay, the Muslim uses this sunnah prayers to turn his mind towards the court of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in preparation for the fard prayer. So you can see it like that. Shaban is almost like the sunnah for the fard of um, of Ramadan because Shaban the voluntary fast. Okay, so it's almost like a sunnah for the obligatory. The obligatory is the month of Ramadan. Okay. And that, that's, that's kind of the wisdom behind that. And you see this practice from the, the Sahaba. So uh, the uh, companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidun uh, uh, Anas, who s- spoke about how him and the, and the other companions would practice this. And as soon as Shaban entered, the Muslims would turn towards the Quran. The, they would uh, take out the zakat from their wealth and you know, make it be prepared, strengthen, and by it, strengthen the poor and the destitute uh, for the fast of Ramadan. So they would give it in advance. And now we have this practice of um, we contribute or we give zakat uh, during the month of Ramadan or we, um, or, or we basically uh, wait till right the end of the month to kind of give to some charity or sadaqah, etc., the idea is to try to give as early as possible so they benefit in the month of Ramadan. Okay, similar to that is Eid as well. When Eid, you know, Fitrana, try to give it beforehand so people benefit um, on the day of Eid. Okay, these are the, the these are the this is the reasoning behind it, and people should try to make a, a habit of doing that. Okay, um, what else did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made specific arrangement to sight the moon. Okay. Um, and obviously, fasting is based on the moon. Consequently, the Prophet ﷺ made special arrangements for this. Um, and Abdullah ibn Abi Qas narrates that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, sorry, heard uh, Um Umm al-Mu'minin say that Aisha say that the Prophet ﷺ used to safeguard the month of Shaban more than he safeguarded any other month. So, and and also uh, also mentioned about how he would sight the moon and and begin to fast. Okay, and if it was cloudy, then he would um, complete the thirty days of Shaban. And then start Ramadan. And now it's difficult in this country, okay, for us to go out and sight the moon. It, uh, it's difficult in this country. Uh, however, I think it's still, if, if it's going to be possible, people should try to make a habit and and, and kind of revive this Sunnah. It's done quite. Uh, it's done a lot in uh, in other countries, and in the UK as well. I know it's kind of it's a Sunnah that has started to be revived. I think more and more should be uh, more and more people should participate in this. You, the, the, the thing is your intention and you're following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And that's the important part here in following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Regardless of you achieve what you wanted to achieve at the end, you still made an effort in following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. You got um, the Sahaba would kind of follow every footstep possible. Okay, Every action that the Prophet ﷺ did, they would follow it. Okay? You've got uh, Abdullah ibn Umar who uh, once he went... On a camel, he was going on a camel and he just went around a tree. And then that's it, and went back normal. And the, his other companions are saying to him, oh, you know, why did you do that for? And he said, I just saw, I just saw one day that I was with the Prophet Sallallahu and he did that. I didn't ask him why he did that. But because he did that, I just wanted to follow him doing that. Okay, so any action that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi did, they, they would look to um, follow that. Okay, so the beginning of Ramadan... Now, the beginning of Ramadan, the Prophet ﷺ would make a special dua. Okay? Um, and he said, when the month of Ramadan would begin, he would say, Oh Allah, uh, give me security, health, and well being in Ramadan, and safeguard Ramadan for me, and protect me from your disobedience in it. And, and also, he would actually can- congratulate the companions on the arrival of Ramadan. And the Prophet ﷺ would, uh, and Imam Ahad narrates this, and Imam Nisai mentioned this as well. That uh, Sayyidina Abu Huraira who says that the Prophet ﷺ would congratulate his companions by saying, The month of Ramadan has come to you. It is a blessed month. Allah has prescribed its fast upon you. Uh, in it, the gates of paradise are opened, the doors of hell closed, and the devils locked up. In it is a night better than uh, a thousand months, and whoever is deprived of it, its guidance is surely deprived. Okay. Now we also, and we had this habit, especially with you got WhatsApp and the social media coming about. Where when Ramadan comes, Alhamdulillah, we we congratulate each other. So we send out a message to congr- congratulate each other. However, we have to have that. You know, are we genuinely pleased for the month of Ramadan arriving, or is it in our mind? Oh, great! Here we go. 
staying hungry for, I don't know, in the UK, what, well, at the moment, probably going to be about 14, 15 hours. I need to stay hungry again now. Are you genuinely pleased for the month of Ramadan uh, arriving? I think that's important here. When we spoke about previously about preparation for the month of Ramadan, this is what preparation is about. You have to be pleased that the month is arriving. You're going to be prepared on what you need to do in the month of Ramadan. Okay. So remember Ramadan itself, originally the Arabs had um, what was called an inter intercalated calendar. So they used to uh, they use a lunar calendar and kind of added uh, in a month sometimes to correct the change of the seasons. So certain months remained th- those seasons there, okay, as we probably got for the UK here. However, it, it's, it's not like the UK where we got four seasons, you know, spring, um, summer, you got autumn, winter. In in the desert, you just had kind of, um, you, you had the two, you had the, what you call um, a season when things start to grow, and then you had the intense heat, the summer, okay. So originally in the calendar, when things start to grow, it was called um, Rabiul, okay? Uh, so you have Rabiul Awwal, the first spring, okay? And you guys would have heard that because it's the it's the month that the Prophet Sallallahu was born in, okay? So when the desert bloomed. Now, it's not a coincidence that the Prophet Sallallahu was born in Rabiul Awwal. You know, it's the month that the desert blooms. So you take kind of meaning from it, okay? But the month of Ramadan was the month of the height of summer, okay? The month of intense heat in the desert and the actual meaning of ramadan is that the meaning of uh, the word rab uh, ramd uh, ramd means um, intense heat okay um it means actually to burn away pure impurities so ramd is when you kind of you take a piece of your piece of iron and you heat it and then you cool it, and then heat it again, and then you cool it, and etc., etc., to kind of get rid of impurities. So iron itself kind of is brittle, so it could break. So you turn iron into steel by you first heating it, then you kind of you're, you're, you're smashing it with a hammer um, to remove the impurities, and then you kind of dip into water to cool it down, and then you repeat that process. You heat it again, you smash it, you cool it down. Okay, so when you, when you have steel. You you have something both strong and flexible, and this is what we take and we take meanings and it's important for us actually. Um, certain words you got the meanings from, and I'll, and I'll speak about fasting, the word fasting itself later on as well. But this is for us the reason why in Ramadan, um, you know, it, it's a case of Ramadan is chosen for fasting. It's so we can heat, we can beat, and we can cool our souls. Um, and in order for us to remove the impurities within our souls, okay, uh, to make ourselves stronger, that's very important here. Okay, when the lunar calendar was actually introduced later on by the, by the Prophet Sallallahu months of it, the months kind of moved around the season. Then, then Ramadan did not remain in summer in the, in the kind of the, the 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 kind of height of the heat. Okay, it did not remain there. Okay, it moved around through the season. So it wasn't necessary about the kind of heat itself. So it wasn't a case of, oh, the reason why you fast is you fast in the heat. It's important you fast in the heat. No, that wasn't the, the reason. The blessings, the kind of the 70 times reward you get for Ramadan, the, the gates of hell closed, the paradise gates opened, you know, all of this is not the, the spe- speciality of fasting, it's but, the, but it's the speciality of Ramadan itself. Okay, so Allah, kind of, Allah SWT can join this blessed month with fasting, this month in which you know the Arabs knew it was it was about purifying yourself, and you you find this in a lot of times actually in in a lot of things that the Arabic word that is used for a certain worship or certain things, the meaning that it had, the meaning it had for the Arabs prior to Islam, that kind of stuck in their head as well. You know, um, I'll mention it later. Thong becomes a fasting. Okay. Um, when it comes to salah, salah the meaning is you got dua, you've got movement, um, you know communication. This was the meaning for salah prior to Islam. So then, when we use salah in our for our prayer, they understand it has it's, it comes out with all these meanings. Zakat, the the meaning of the word is to uh, to purify. Okay, and that's what we're doing to our money. We're purifying uh, what you know our money, and there there are many examples of this. Um. 
So moving on, the, you've got the, the virtues of fasting as well. Um, so we spoke about Ramadan itself, the virtues of that, but then you got the virtues of fasting. And the Prophet Sallallahu spoke about, you know, whoever fasts in the month of Ramadan with faith and with and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, he will ha- have all his previous sins forgiven. Okay, SubhanAllah. And, uh, and, and, and narrated in Bukhari and, and, and Muslim. And this is what we should be aiming towards for full sincerity when it comes to our fasting. Okay, it's not a case of we just getting up, eating, going back to sleep, staying asleep all throughout the day. You've got to continue your, your daily life. Make the most of it, but be sincere in what you're doing. Increase your worship. Okay, the Prophet Sallallahu also said that the fast is a shield from hell, just like one of your shields protects you in battle. Okay, now um, he mentioned that there are two sanctuaries. The fast and the nightly qiyam, which is the night prayer, the prayer at night. Okay? Um, and, he, and he mentioned every good deed is rewarded by 10 to 700 except the fast. And Allah SWT says that the fast is for me. And you think, well, what does that mean? Everything is for Allah SWT. But the, the, the point of saying this is to increase the emphasis on this. Okay, Increase the emphasis on the fact that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kind of sees fasting in such a high regard, He will reward you. He's not giving you kind of any numbers here now, He'll reward you in the hereafter, inshallah. Okay? Um, linguistically, like I just mentioned, actually, uh, fasting means om, means to abstain or hold oneself back from something. Okay? The original meaning is the, the bridle of a mount, so used to hold it back from galloping. So, you know, the bridle and a mount uh, like a horse. And what what do you do? You hold the reins and you kind of you pull it back, and that's the meaning of psalm. Is uh, and, and if we take it into our lives, it's a case of psalm is about um, c- taking control of your nafs, okay, and pulling it back, your desires and controlling them. The uh, idea here is that if you can stop yourself from eating fourteen, fifteen, even up to eighteen hours, you know, which we are, you know, we love our food. Let's be honest with you, we love our food. If you can control yourself in doing that, um, what's to say that you can't control yourself in all the other kind of bad things, um, you know that 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 are against the the Sharia. So this is the thing: you're disciplining the soul here. Uh, Psalm fasting is about disciplining the soul. So the nafs is like a nafs is like a horse. So the scholars say the nafs is like a horse. So if you don't control it, it will control you. If you don't take the reins of it, um, it will start controlling you. Okay. It will control you and it take you uh, uh, wherever it wants to take you. Okay, and that, that's really important here. Um, we're going to go on to an ad break in we've got a few minutes. So just quickly, then uh, I mentioned about intention. So uh, uh, right at the start, so the famous these actions are based on intentions. Um, so any normal action you're rewarded by ten times. So let's just say if you intend to do an action, but you don't do it. This is the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. If you intend to do an action but you don't do it. You get one reward. You, sincerely, you, you genuinely want to do an action. You know, it's not just you got it in your mind, but you know you're not going to do it. You can't fool Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Okay, He knows. He knows what you're thinking. Okay, so you you intend to do an action, and you do it, and you don't do it. Sorry, you get one reward. Um, if you do the action, you get ten times the reward. And then you kind of have this multiplier. Okay, this multiplier, which is what you can call the X factor or the multiplication factor. You know, depending on your level of sincerity. So actions may be rewarded 10 times, 100 times, 700 times, you know, and then it could be 700 squared, 700 cubes, 700 to the power of 4, and so on and so forth. So this sincerity factor kind of increases that reward more and more and more. Okay, so obviously you'll need a calculator to work all that out. But when the month of Ramadan comes, you get an additional multiplier. Okay, and you multiply everything by another 70. Okay, you multiply everything by another 70 because this is the month of opening. Okay? So there are certain times that the presence of Allah SWT is especially close to us. There are certain places where the presence of Allah SWT is especially you know, um, powerful. Okay? And there are, there are certain people around who the, uh, the presence of Allah SWT is especially uh, potent. People who, who live in the presence of Allah SWT. Okay? And uh, this is important. So this this thing of um, this thing of intention is very important. So have it in your mind. Any, any any action you do, any little action you do, have your intention. There's a real good book actually, book of intentions that 
it's it's good because it kind of increases your intention. You can sit down just to eat, or you can eat a Mars bar or something. But as long as you have the intention of I'm eating this Mars bar to gain energy, so then I can continue to provide for my family, I can continue to work, or I can have the strength to then worship, etc. What that does is it increases your reward more and more. Okay, and that's really important. Yeah, that that reward, and and you sh- you should make a habit of all this. You should try to do this and make a habit of uh, increasing your intention. And a small action can be um, can be kind of rewarded so much more. Inshallah, when we come back after the the breaks, we will talk about the the study of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the iftar, um, uh, amongst other things. Um, and and then kind of we, if we have the time. We will talk about some of the preparations for Ramadan and, and a few tips for Ramadan as well. That inshallah will will help us um, will, will help us throughout this blessed month. Inshallah. So we'll be right back after this um, uh, uh, after this ad break. Sakala.
Welcome back to uh, Ramadan Radio Wolves, uh, 87.9 FM. Uh, along with that, you can listen to us uh, through the website, through the app, uh, on Facebook. You actually have visual on it, Facebook as well. You won't be missing much, but you, c- you can still listen to on, on the other devices. Okay, so let's continue, inshallah. So we're speaking about the, the, the Prophet's Ramadan, um, and we, we reached the point of Sehri. So how was um, how did he uh, how was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sehri? Now he described the Sehri as being a a blessed meal, and this is very important here because um, we have this attitude of it doesn't matter, you know, we just eat beforehand and then fall asleep, and that's fine. Just sleep all the way through. Sehri getting up, it, it's it's just it's too it's too much of an effort. Okay. But no, he, he, he mentioned it being a blessed meal. And we're, if we're not getting up and if we're not eating during that period, we're missing out on this blessedness. Okay? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, um, in the narrations, he invited um, uh, our brother bin Sariya, uh, narrates that he invited me to Sari in Ramadan by saying, come join in the blessed meal. And there's various narrations on that when he speaks about being the blessed meal. Okay? He, Sallallahu Alaihi would perform Sahri with dates. Okay, and this is interesting here because we kind of link the dates to iftar, which is fine, and we'll speak about that how it is again. So not to to uh, eat dates, but we miss out on the fact that the Prophet also uh, used to eat dates at Sehri as well. Okay, um, and like iftar, the Prophet also performed Sehri with dates, but not not too many. He did not eat too many there. Okay, he he, he had some he had some dates. Um, so we should we should make the most of this as well and wherever possible, um, try to you know because the houses are packed with dates during Ramadan. You know everyone knows uh, you got all these uh, all these uh, superstores etc. Everyone's advertising Ramadan sales on etc. Um, and, and and they have dates there. They know so you will always have dates there. So make the most of it and also have some dates during Sehri as well. I think that's important as well. Okay. Um, uh, Sayyidina Anas narrates that the Prophet Sallallahu ordered me to prepare Sehri because he intended to fast. So I, I, I bought dates and a pan filled with water. Okay, um, and, and and another narration in Abdullah that the, the best Sehri of the believer is dates. Okay, so kind of compare all this to ourselves and how we do it. We I remember I was once having this discussion because people think as oh it's a blessed meal that means eat as much as possible, take all the blessings. Well, that's not necessarily what it means, that the time period is best, and so eat something. And the Prophet Sallallahu used to, you know, it's his habit, and he used to eat, he never used to eat much, okay? But you compare it to what we do, you know, how much we eat, etc. Which then you get up in the morning, well, then you fall asleep after Sehri and get up ready for work, and you don't feel right, probably because you've had so much to eat for Sehri. we got it in our mind, oh, I've got those 14 hours, 15 hours, or 18 hours, I'm going to stay hungry, let me just kind of make the most of it, and stuff my face as much as possible. That's not the idea here. And um, this is, I'm talking about from experience here. The, when, you, when you cut down your intake um, of food, um, you, you have this blessed strength in Ramadan anyway, but your worship, etc., you don't feel tired, you won't feel sleepy. You can make the most of Ramadan like that, but if... We kind of stuffing our face during Sehri and the same in iftar, then you're just going to become lazy, lethargic. You won't be able to really make the most of the month. Okay. So the Prophet says, perform Sehri even if one sip of water, for surely Allah and His angels send mercy upon those who perform Sehri. Okay. Um, and He supplicated for the barakah and His Ummah in Sehri. So He said, Oh Allah, bless my Ummah in the Sehri. After this, he ordered the eating of Sehri, even if it was just one sip of water or one date, because the angels supplicate for those who perform Sehri. Okay, and and he says some would describe the benefit and wisdom in the Sehri. So, um, as I mentioned, he described it as a, a holy blessed meal. So, what what meal could be more blessed than the one which helps and aids obedience to Allah? Okay, you're gonna con- whatever you're gonna eat there, it'll, it'll give you that strength. To to you know, obedience to Allah, whether that is through your work, because that's obedience to Allah as well. Your 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 kind of you know your halal earnings, your working, um, that is that's obedience as well. That's worship as well. Or whether it's any other form of worship in terms of uh, recitation of the Quran, uh, fast, um, prayer, etc. All of this is worship. 
okay? And it also says, seek the help of the Seri in your days fast and seek the help of the siesta, which is a rest. So you should also be resting a bit as well in in the night, the Qiyam, okay? Another important here is that he would delay the Seri, okay? So the Prophet ﷺ would not be hasty in performing Seri, rather he would delay it as much as possible. Otherwise, you know, it's a case of for us that, I don't know, we say it's going to be, what, about 4 o'clock. And we decide, you know what, I'll finish my Taravi. It's about, it's about 10 o'clock. Uh, sorry, um, 12, 1 o'clock. Let me just eat something now and go to sleep. Forget it. Now, he would delay the Seri as much as possible. Okay? He would delay the Seri. Um, and he would kind of perform um, the Seri close to the breaking of the dawn. Okay, Abdullah ibn Abbas narrates that the Prophet ﷺ said, My Ummah will remain on good as long as they delay the Seri and hasten their, their, their iftar. And I had this discussion with a lot of people because we seem to follow the kind of opposite of this. What we would do is, you know, we'd say, Oh, this is the Seri time, so this is Fajr start time. Fajr start time and Seri end time are the same thing. So we'd kind of put in Fajr start time is this time, but um, Seri end time, do 10 minutes before that. It's the same thing there, you know. So we, we kind of you, you should be delaying the seri as much as possible. I understand this precaution, etc. But if you know that that is for just start time, then that's seri end time as well, okay. Um, and then it's a case of hasten the iftar. So basically, uh, another thing we tend to do is that when it's got the maghrib maghrib time, we add on ten fifteen minutes. Or let's just play safe. Play, add on another ten fifteen minutes. Well, why? If it's maghrib time, that means the iftar time. Uh, you know, the, it's time to break your fast. So um, hasten towards it. Don't delay it. Okay, don't delay it. Because it also comes about this thing of um, what you call being macho as well. It stops you from being macho. Oh, look at that. You, wimps, you, you know, you, you, you've decided to break your fast now. I can go on. I can go on. I can go on for another few hours. I can go on after Taravi. Um, I can just continue. Okay. Now it's not that the Prophet says hasten towards breaking your fast. Okay. And then you've got the in, uh, increasing the recitation of the Quran. Uh, and the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by uh, Abdullah ibn Umar says that the fast and the Quran um, will both intercede for the servant on the day of Qiyamah. The fast will plead, O Lord, I prevented him from food and desires during the day. Uh, the Quran will plead, I prevented him from sleep at night. Okay, um, so, so even though uh, reciting the Quran was his norm, he would recite the Quran's norm, but throughout the, he would do this normally throughout the year. He said, would increase his recitation during this month. And though um, he always recited a great deal of Quran uh, in his Nawafil and Tahajjit, etc., or, you know, or, or ordinary nights, his recitation in the nights of Ramadan uh, would be longer. The Prophet Sallallahu um, a close companion, uh, Sayyidina Khuzaifa, who described the recitation in Ramadan, that one night in Ramadan, I had the honor of praying, uh, uh, praying with the Prophet ﷺ. He recited Surah Baqarah, then Ali Imran, and then An Nisa. When he reached the verse of feeding Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, he would supplicate to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The Prophet ﷺ had not even completed two rakat when uh, Sayyidina Bilal called the adhan for Fajr. Okay, so in other words. The, the recitation lasted the whole night. Okay? He would recite to others the whole Quran in Ramadan. Okay? There was also this thing of revision in, in uh, revision of the Quran by uh, Jibreel alayhi salam. So it's narrate, uh, narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas that uh, Jibreel alayhi salam would meet uh, him sallallahu alayhi salam, every night in Ramadan and revise uh, the Quran with him. Um, Although Jibreel Islam would revise the Quran with him once every Ramadan, in the Ramadan of the year of his passing, he revised it twice. So in the in the final year, and this was uh, mentioned by Sayyidina Aisha, who said that uh, Veli Jibreel used to revise the Quran with him once each year. But this year he re- revised it with him twice. So in the final year, of the, uh, the final year of the passing away of the Prophet ﷺ, Jibreel Islam came and um, revised the Quran with the Prophet ﷺ twice uh, then. Okay? He would increase uh, in his kindness. So the Prophet ﷺ, Prophet ﷺ was one of the, uh, you know, the most generous. Okay, no needy person ever left from him empty-handed. Even if he, he himself had nothing, he would borrow it, uh, borrow whatever it was, and fulfill the needs of others. Okay, although his generosity grew with each day when the when the kind of moon of Ramadan was sighted, his generosity increased even further. 
So the companions state that um, they saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shower generosity, generosity in Ramadan faster than the the wind. Okay, uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas states that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the most generous of all people, but was even more generous in the month of Ramadan. And when Jibril would arrive, his showering of generosity was faster than the sweeping wind. So when Jibril Islam would kind of come, or whether there was a revelation, or whether it be going over the Quran, etc. Um, after that, the following day, his generosity would kind of increase so much more, okay, like the sweeping wind, okay. And some of the wisdom behind this increased generosity is that in Ramadan, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala increases reward and blessings upon everyone, uh, every one of his servants, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would kind of would would also adopt this practice of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, okay, and to be generous with people. Uh, uh, and the charity of this month is more virtuous than the charity of other months, which is uh, narrated by uh, Anas. Um, the most virtuous sadaqah is the sadaqah in Ramadan. Okay. Uh, another point is charity gives support to those fasting, and we spoke about this earlier on as well. Then you have you know, the combinations of combining fasting and charity, uh, which leads to the attainment of Jannah. So there's a lot of, a lot of narrations about giving sadaqah, giving charity, etc., which kind of backs up this this practice of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, okay, um, he would use miswak while fasting. The tooth, uh, the fact, he you, you use that while fasting. Every person of uh, understanding knows um, how much the Prophet sallallahu alaihi loved the miswak. You know the, um, the the tooth stick. Okay, he even used it while fasting, and it it, it does not break your fast. Okay, it does not break your fast. Um, it's a practice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he used it while fasting as well. And the narration that I saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam using miswak while fasting on many countless occasions. So we again, remember when I said at the start that we just get into this habit or we just follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as much as possible. Okay? And that intention is that I'm doing it to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and your reward will increase so much more. Okay? And he also described the etiquette of fasting. So every ibadah has its own etiquette. And benefits of it, um, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described before fasting as well. And he says that the fast acts as a shield as long as it's not cracked. And when he was, um, and when he was asked Abu Hurairah and Raisa, when he was asked, you know, what is this? You know, how is this possible? And he says, you know, how does one make a crack in it? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained by lying and backbiting. And now, when we were young, it was a case of. Um, we were told, oh, don't lie or backbite. And, 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 the, and the parents and the elders had their own ways of kind of getting us to do good. Uh, just, just, just scaring us off. Don't lie or backbite. It's going to break your fast. It doesn't break your fast, but it uh, lessens the, the reward for you. Okay. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you're putting crack in your shield here by lying and backbiting, etc. So don't do that. Okay. Don't do that. And he said, look, when one of you is fasting, you should not speak evil, nor undertake evil. And if anyone fights or swears at you, respond by saying, Verily, I am fasting. And you can take two meanings from this. One is you're telling your, the person who's fasting, uh, fighting with you, I'm fasting. And the other is you're telling yourself, reminding yourself, calm down, I'm fasting. Okay, don't go into quarrel, don't go into fighting, etc. Because okay? fasting is not just about refraining from food and drink, but it's also refraining from useless and indecent talk. Uh, like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Okay. Um, moving on because we've got uh, less time there. So moving on to the iftar then. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would kind of perform iftar with the poor. Um, and, and and this good practice actually taking place in the masajid where we give we give food, etc. And hope that someone who needs, uh, you know, maybe poor, they'll be struggling for food, etc. They can come and eat in the masjid. I can understand it's not it's not going to be possible this year because of the uh, coronavirus and the restrictions. But there are other means or ways of you can maybe give charity for some of some of the charity that are given to the poor and, and, and kind of um, getting meals made for the poor in this country or various other countries as well. And you're kind of fulfilling that sunnah by doing that. So give that a, give that a try. You, know, you can't be coming out with your biryani and bringing it to the mas- uh, masjids to feed someone, but at least you can then give that uh, the money aspect to to someone online or uh, physically to someone uh, who's who's doing some charity in the UK as well to feed the poor okay um he also performed obviously um, iftar before the prayer so he would have something to eat 
and then he would go and pray. Um, and this is another thing actually because there's this discussion take back, okay, how much do you eat before you go off and pray? And you eat as much as that the food aspect or the hunger has been removed from your mind. Okay? So when you're praying, you're not thinking about food. You're thinking about your Lord and you're concentrating on prayer. So open your fast, eat as much, eat as much that then, okay, that's that's sufficient enough. Now I need to go off and pray. In that case, if you sit down and then you're there for the next hour, now that's fine, I've got to continue eating and then I'll go off and pray. Okay, so find the right balance there. And the Prophet ﷺ would do iftar with date and water. So as narrated by Anas ibn Malik, that the Prophet ﷺ performed iftar with fresh dates. If there weren't any, then with dry, with dry dates. And if there weren't any, then with water. Okay, and there's also some narration that he actually used milk. Uh, used to have milk as well for iftar. Okay, so dates and milk. Um, then you've got the uh, in, another important aspect uh, of uh, performing du'a at the time of iftar, which we kind of neglect a lot as well. So take your time, sit down beforehand, and and make du'a. And actually, interesting because you'll be making du'a before and after opening your fast. Okay, some of the scholars say look, actually the meaning of du'a it should be after you've opened your fast. Some say it's before. So how about you just do both? Okay, before iftar time and then straight after uh, opening the fast. So this is a blessed time actually. Um, and as narrated, the du'a of three people is not rejected. The just ruler, the fasting person and the t- uh, at the time of iftar and the oppressed. The doors of mercy are open for him and Allah and proclaims uh, and Allah proclaims uh, by my honor I will help you even if after some time. Okay, so make the most of this blessed time and make an abundance du'a. Make du'a for everyone. So every action you do, anything you do, make du'a for everyone because you make du'a for others, you, your reward will increase as well. They will get it and your reward will increase. So you're just sitting there and you say, Look, you know, uh, accept this fast of mine and give the reward to all Muslims all over the world. It won't harm you in any way. It's not like a, a you know what you call a cake where you know a slice is taken out and you have to give it to everyone else and then you've got, you haven't got much left. No, you've got the entire cake. Okay, you've got the entire cake. Okay, so um, just quick one actually I'm going to mention then uh, I'm just going to talk about a few tips and the Salat Ravi is very important as well um, and, the, and, and it's narrated that whoever stands to pray in Ramadan through faith and for Allah's pleasure all his sins from the past will be forgiven Okay, and the Prophet some would encourage the Qiyam uh, the prayer of Ramadan but would not order it with compulsion so it's not comp- compulsory but there's a, you know Sunnah is like a high emphasized Sunnah and people should make the most of that um, just quick things, a few things then before we're finishing off here then. Um, so we've got the end of Shaban coming. How how prepared are we for, for Ramadan? Um, be prepared right from the first night. Uh, Allah SWT will gaze upon his creation, a special gaze for his ummah on the first night of Ramadan. So make the most of it. So get into that habit straight up. Tie up any loose ends. Don't kind of get yourself busy with a lot of stuff to be done in Ramadan. Let it uh, focus on, on, on prayer and worship, etc. Okay? Um, make your sincere intentions that you want this Ramadan to be sacred and special Ramadan. Okay? Plan and anticipate all that might distract you from putting uh, every hour to its great use. Okay? So to plan ahead. I think this is really important. Plan ahead. Serving Hidma. So go beyond yourself and your need. You know, serve others as much as possible. I know we've got certain restrictions in place. Whereas previously it was a case of even you going to the, you can still actually when you go to the masjid and there may be times where they need assistance because they have certain protocols they have to follow they'll need more people to support them so make yourself available okay link yourself to the masjid uh, um, and help out whether that's in the evening for travi time just giving some security duty ensuring certain things are so certain protocols are followed you will get the reward inshallah so you know khidma serving is important charity. Sadaqah, um, again, really important. And as I said, try to give it to the start rather than at the end. It would be like kind of a rush right at the end. I understand as well people think that, oh, you could fall in the last 10 days and you get so much, so much more reward and they'll kind of just put all the eggs in one basket the 27th night, which we will talk about inshallah later on. I was going to mention it today, but uh, we've not got enough time. So I'll mention it inshallah uh, if, um, if, if, if they allow me the radio. Guys allowed me back in basically. They feel it's not a complete complete failure. 
and they don't get some writing taking place outside the studio. So we will get kind of eventually an opportunity to talk about that. Okay. Some practical tips to reduce your caffeine habit, you know, preferably a few days before you start fasting. Um, don't be over reliant on that. Okay. And and follow the you know, follow follow a good routine basically. Try to follow a good routine for yourself. Don't eat much. I think that's the important thing here, not to eat much. Um we we make this habit, don't eat this kind of fried, you know, you got the pakora and smosa, etc. Try to avoid that. Um if you were to see to make it a genuine um rule for yourself and be strict on yourself, I'm not gonna have any smosa pakora, etc. You'll see the big you know, the main difference here. People feel now I've been hungry all that time, I need to go home and I need to you know, whatever's in front of me, that's it, it's going down. You'll realise the difference. You know, just just make a habit of eating less and you'll see the difference that is. And, and how it kind of changes everything, uh, your approach to, to fasting, etc. Okay. Um, before uh, we kind of, oh, I just want to quickly, just in case I run out of time, I thought it'd be a good idea to just mention a a a riddle. A zero riddle for, for, for you guys. Um, and we'll give the answer. I think this will be on Facebook, so I think there'll be a comment section on the Facebook. So people can put the answers there. Or even kind of email the answers in, and inshallah, we'll give a shout out to those some of those that uh, got the right answer uh, next week, inshallah. So the riddle is this then, and I've just made this. I'm not very good at. I'm good at uh, solving riddles. I'm probably not good at creating riddles. Okay, so here's goes then. Um, it's zero related. So just imagine that it's zero related. So who am I? Okay, the leader that saw the truth, the leader that no one identified. All the disfigured are buried amongst the rocks. All of them buried with their pride. Okay, I'll say it one once more. The leader that saw the truth, the leader that no one identified. All the disfigured are buried amongst the rocks. All of them buried with their pride. So this is like a kind of light-hearted um, uh, riddle. Um, keeps you guys. It kind of shows me that who actually uh, listened to the lesson as well. I think that was the main aim for me. Um, but put your uh, answers in the comment section, and we'll try to do one. Uh, every week so i'll give the i'll give the answer next week and i want i want actually the name obviously um because we're identifying uh identifying so i want uh, i want the name and, and it's zero related obviously um for those that have been watching my my lessons on a weekly basis which i've stopped actually during ramadan we're just having a break during ramadan but those that have been watching my lessons zero lessons um should know the answer if you didn't yeah we're making good enough notes okay um, so we leave it at that, inshallah, and um, uh, make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless uh, our Ramadan. And whenever it is, uh, so like I said, some people will be starting tonight, the Ravi will start tonight, some people will be case of the Ravi will be tomorrow night. What's really important and, and, and this thing that we have to argue and say, I'm right, I'm right, please avoid all that. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all merciful. I remember when we were young, we used to claim that, oh, Eid is on three days. So we used to kind of make the most of three days. So as you can see, you know, we might even have three Eids as well. Make the most of all of them, okay? But whenever we start Ramadan, you start based on your masjid, whatever it is, and then continue. Just focus. We don't. We, we lose the focus. We should be focusing on our fast. Rather than focusing on our fast, we start to argue, etc. And that's not the right way forward, okay? So may Allah SWT bless our, our Ramadan and, and help us fulfill uh, what we want to achieve from there, not to the point where we will be regretting right at the end. Oh, Ramadan has gone so fast. Okay, so Jazakallah, uh, please give some feedback on how, how you find it and how we can improve this. Okay, Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.